I think you have one of the most original comedic voices that I've encountered. There's no one else like you. And you would come on our show and you would do stuff that I hadn't seen anybody do. Uh, well, I didn't see anybody do anything like it on other late night spots. And I thought, this is a real find, this, this Tig Notaro. I mean, it was well, a joy. It was a joy to discover you and have you come on the show. Well, I appreciate that. The feeling is mutual. And, um, and what was exciting for me was, um, <laughs> for you, I mean, this wasn't the exciting part, but for years I was turned down for talk shows and late mm -hmm. night, or I'd have, you know, one shot or no shot, and, and I would get feedback that it, my delivery was too slow or too, not enough jokes per minute, I heard, um, and uh, too low key, mm -hmm. not mainstream enough. And then when I got a shot to come on your show, I remember leaving the studio and I got a call from my manager saying that, um, that, that your show had called to have me booked again immediately yes. and that you wanted me to be a regular on the show. And I, I, was, I couldn't even comprehend that because of all of the rejection I had gotten. Yeah. And I feel like your show gave me this incredible opportunity to be myself, to try out weird things. And it also, I'm certain, um, went hand in hand with me being welcomed onto so many other talk shows. And um, Well, I mean, the, what I remember is you came on your first show, you did some really unique impressions that were really funny. And we said, oh God, she's really great. Let's have her come back. You came back, now most people in that situation would say, I've gotta be conservative, I'm getting my second shot, I've gotta make sure it's safe. On your second shot, for most of your shot, for most of your act, you slowly pushed a stool <laughs> across the stage, which was the gutsiest thing anybody would try, even if it was your 15th time on the show, <laughs> you might, maybe you'd try it, but it would still feel risky. It was your second time on the show, and it was hilarious, but, it was a stool bigger than this. It was a stool bigger was, than that. And do you remember this, Andy? And yeah. Tig was- It made a horrible noise, which was the point. Yeah, it was the point. <laughs> and you were pushing it around and that was, if someone had pitched that to me, I would have said, there's no way that's going to work. Uh -huh. Fortunately, they didn't. <laughs> you just did it. Well, when I pitched it um, to your producer- Probably J.P. Buck, yeah. Exactly, who, yeah. J.P. Um, he was like, all right, I trust you. I just, let's, let's see it. And so he did come down and watch me do it, I think at the comedy store. Yeah. And, uh, and to be fair, it doesn't work for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there is a long stretch where There's it, a long stretch yeah, where it it's not working. It doesn't work. And you have to commit to it. Well, yeah. also a shout out to J.P. Buck, who does a beautiful job of, of yes. finding amazing people like you and, uh, and, and just making our, enriching our show well, so Conan, much. Well, Conan, I'll have you know, I've been in Toronto for four weeks filming Star Trek and was then in New York uh, for the Tribeca Film Festival. Mm -hmm. I flew home just to do this episode to say my farewells and my thank yous to you because I have to go back to Tribeca after I do this. That's crazy, you flew, I'm told, yeah, you, you were saying you flew. I got on the first flight this morning. And you flew here, flew went here. right to your house. Took a shower. My sons, who I hadn't seen at this point in five weeks, said, look how big we got how cute and sad at the same time. I hugged them, kissed them, and, uh, and yeah, after I took a shower, ran out the door and came to Largo. So you're a terrible parent is what you're saying. I am. I'm, I, I choose you over my adorable, precious children. What I do with my kids whenever they said, Daddy, Daddy, we love you, is I put my hands over their faces and push them away and say, show business first. That's what I do. And that's how they've grown up and they understand now. They understand. Do you miss the... Andy, you've seen it, right? I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> it's, it's a good bit. It's a good bit. It's not a bit. <laughs> I, well. It's just getting hard now because my son is like 6'2", so I have to like, yeah, he's right up. <laughs> when I'm an old man and they're like, we love you, Daddy, you're leaving this earth. Oh, my God. Speaking of... show business first! <laughs> Speaking of old man... Yeah? My children are deathly afraid of becoming old men. 
Like they start to cry. And they'll ask. How old are they? They'll be five in two weeks. And they, and they say, out of nowhere, am I going to be an old man? Oh, no. And, and we say, well, you know, what do you think an old man is? And, and they're like, I don't know. Just And then they imitate an old man. And it is their worst nightmare. They cry, like tears in their eyes. And it comes up, I mean, near daily. Am I going to be an old man? That's and what's so crazy is Stephanie's father moved in with us. And we ask, you know, his, pa his name is Papa Grande. Yeah. It's his God-given name. Right. And we say, and his rapper name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we say, is Papa Grande an old man? And they say, no. And we're like... Yeah, yeah. So where do they get this? So much <laughs> <laughs> News flash. Uh, yeah. But I mean, we don't know what an old man, we don't know what happened. They're both terrified. That's so funny. You've got to start telling them, from what I can tell, being an old man is fantastic. Yeah. Because you get to say whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You get to be a complete pain in the ass. And you can I, probably eat ice cream all day. I mean, I even went to the point of asking, am I an old man? Because we're trying to understand. And they're like, no. Right, right. But we know they saw something somewhere. They saw an old man. They saw an old man. Definitely made a bad impression on yeah, them. Yeah. But yeah. Stephanie's father is not an old man. OK. Well, it may be that they just got out of the phase of pooping themselves and not being able to walk very well, and they don't want to go back there anytime soon. That's, That's true. true. You know, how the be end of life and the beginning Having of life are very time similar. Having walking and yeah. diapers and all that. Yeah. That could be it. Okay. They're just, you know, trying not to bench and but but Benjamin button it. They're yeah. always saying, I just want to be a kid forever. And they, they love candy and toys. They're the most generic children. Yeah. <laughs> Your That's com all. Your complaint is they're generic. <laughs> <laughs> they're so adorable, but they are so terrified to be old men.